Right now, we're going to be working on the situation analysis. And let me get to my stuff. How do we get there? So to get to the situation analysis, we need to go to getting started. Um, so this is what it looks like when you first log into CapSim and you need to go to getting started and you need to hit situation analysis and all of these different sections we are going to be doing. Um, so let's go ahead and click on intro and it gives us a bunch of information that we can start working on. Um, it gives us this perceptual map and this is important. Um, a lot of times you'll hear the word segment or you'll hear circles or you'll hear, um, you know, that that section of the market. Um, so right here we see five circles that are getting that are moving down and to the right. On the X axis we see performance and on the Y we see size. So all these circles move at different paces and they encompass different types of products and different customers who have different um, product requirements. So we see that low end is sort of slow behind is in there pushing fast. So just know that every single type of customer is in one of these segments and each segment is different. So someone in the high end wants a super small and super fast product, but someone in the low end product wants something that they don't really care about performance or size. They mostly care about price. So each year they want something that's smaller and faster. And the situation analysis is going to show us um, how much uh, change is going to happen year over year and how we sort of calculate some of these things. So go ahead and hit next. And next we see our, I'm going to switch over here. Um, it gives us a little form that we're going to fill out. On my screen, I actually just have a Google Sheets slide open or a Google Sheets document open because um, I already filled it out on mine. So I'm going to walk you through how to fill it out. Um, the way the situation analysis works, it's not going to make you fill out each and every single cell with information. It's going to make you fill out the first two or three um, sets of information and it'll auto populate. So like what we were talking about earlier, we see over on the right hand side, we see all these different circles. These circles represent segments in the entire microprocessor industry. Each one has different uh, characteristics and different things that they want. Um, so information you're going to need to do the situation analysis, you're going to need your capstone courier, which is in reports and industry reports, and you're going to need something called the industry conditions report, which is under reports and um, industry conditions and then industry conditions report. So all the information you need is contained in these um, in these documents. So one thing that it gives us when you first log in, is we see all these numbers in a chart. It gives us a bunch of information. We see a bunch of numbers in the chart, but those are not what we need for the answers. This gives us what's called the segment center. So a way that um, they differentiate products and the game set up is every single customer is in one of these circles, but um, inside the circle, people have different requirements. So let's take a high-end customer, for example. They are willing to pay almost anything. They just want the fastest, the smallest computer processor that they can get their hands on. So they are willing to pay um, a lot of money and they want to be on the frontier. They are in the bottom right corner of the circle because they're always pushing the boundaries. So that purple, violet, pink circle that we see, that is what we want to aim at. That is what we're trying to get to. So we can see that it's offset from the circle um, and it gives us an offset amount. Um, but one thing you need to realize, and this is sort of tricky, is that the traditional product, it is right in the middle of the circle. So they just want something, you know, average, normal, 100% just right in the middle. And low end, we see that they're in the top left center of the circle. So they want something, they don't really care about size or performance, they just want price. So the tricky part is traditional, uh, we see that they're right in the center of the circle. So all we need to do is we, we don't need to add or subtract anything from their performance or size. So you do 5 and 15, 5.7 and 14.3. And when you enter in those numbers, uh, CapSim's automatically going to fill those in. Like I said, like these first two rows are highlighted green and it's auto going to populate it if you got correct. If you didn't, it's going to say incorrect answer and the bottom won't populate. So next we see low end. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do low end just because I'll show you how to do it if it's including offset. So we need to get to the segment center and we need to subtract this offset. So performance in the center of the circle is 2.5 for round zero. 
So it goes round by round. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 2.5 and we're going to subtract off the offset of 0.8. So minus 0.8 and it's going to be 1.7. So we're going to take the size of 17.5 and instead of subtracting, we need to add 0.8. And this offset, that's not something I came up with. That's something Capstone gives you, and that's based on what the consumers want segment by segment. So again, we're going to do this. We're going to um, take what is our performance for round one. We're going to do 3.0, and we're going to go ahead and subtract 0.8, which gives us 2.2. And for round one, we're going to take the size of 17, and we're going to add 0.8. So for round two, excuse me, round one, we see that the low-end customers their ideal spot, the spot where they're going to buy the most product is at 2.2 and 17.8. And if you get that correct, that's going to auto fill in. Um, oh, it didn't auto fill in because I did my formula wrong. I didn't put a dollar sign in front of it, but it's going to auto fill in for you. You can go ahead and do high end performance and size. So the next part of the situation analysis is something called the industry demand activity. This industry demand um, tells you about growth. It tells you about how many pro and it helps you decide how many products you're going to sell. So one thing that you need is you need your capstone courier to know this. Remember capstone courier. That is a review of last year and it changes round by round updates based on what you've done. So we need to get our demand for last year. So our demand for last year, we can find this on page five through nine traditionals on page five. So let's go ahead to page five for round zero. And we see that the total industry unit demand, which was how many units the entire traditional segment sold, was 7,387 units. But just like any growing business, like any growing industry, it's gonna grow by some sort of percentage rate. And there's a growth rate that Capsum gives us. So three lines down, we see that next year's segment growth rate is 9.2%. I'm gonna go ahead and put in 9.2%. And this 9.2% stays the exact same this, uh, for the entire game. So every single one has a different growth rate. Traditional is 9.2, low end is 11.7, um, but something like high end grows super fast at 16.2% per year. So the way to figure out um, our growth rate is we need to take the 7387 and we need to times it by one plus 9.2. And I'll show you why we do the one plus. That just saves us a step. So we do one plus 9.2. So that gives us um, 8,067 units. And that's going to auto populate. These are the only two pieces of information you need to fill out. Um, and the reason why we did plus 9.2 over here, I'm going to say, let's just say we did 7,387 times 9.2%. That's going to give us 679 units or 680 rounded up. So basically, the difference between 8,067 and 7,387 is that 680. That was a lot of numbers. I talked fast, but that's why I'm recording this. Um, so basically, adding one just gives us a step from adding on, and it has that built in. So we take our last year demand, we times it by a growth rate, and you get our next year demand. And you do the same formula, same thing for low end. And I have a couple of um, helpful tips throughout this document that you can go back and you can look at through this video. So next we get to our capacity analysis. And let me get to it over here. This is one of the more difficult sections, but it gives us all the information that we need. So there are a couple rules I need to teach you in Capsim. <clears throat> so um, we need to do our first shift capacity, first and second shift capacity, both for the company and industry. Then we need to do automation level and the cost of capa double capacity and the cost to raise automation to 10. So first off, what is capacity? Capacity is how many units we can produce in a given year. Um, it's gonna give you all this information that I've screenshotted right here, but we see that capacity next round is 1800 for our ABLE traditional product. So that means in one year from nine to five, our people can produce 1800 units. So we can actually work our employees overtime and we can actually produce double our sh first shift capacity. So that means from nine to five, our people are going to produce 1800 units. But actually, if we make them work overtime and pay them a little bit extra, they can produce 3600 units of capacity. 
So what is our first shift capacity for us, for just when you're doing the practice for Andrews? You have 1,800 units of capacity, so go ahead and put 1,800. And this is sort of a tricky question, but what is the industry first shift capacity for the traditional product? That is a lot. So everyone in our company, everyone in the industry, you can go ahead and count it up. But since it's the first round, everyone's the exact same. So it's going to be 1,800 times. How many teams are there in this game? There are six teams. So we're going to do 1,800 times six. And that's going to give us 10,800 units of capacity in our first shift. Um, and I took a picture of this on my phone. I just want to double check that I did everything correctly. Um, so yes, 10,800 uh, industry uh, for the first shift, but now we need to decide our first and sh second shift capacity. <clears throat> and this was uh, double our first shift. So from nine to five, we can do 1,800 units. From nine to five, the entire industry can do 10,800. But for us, how much, if, how much can we produce if we include overtime? That is simply just double our first shift. So that's gonna be 3,600 units or it's going to be 1800 times two, doubling our first shift. And what is that? Uh, with our industry, we're gonna go ahead and double our industry as well, which gives us 21,600 units. And then <clears throat> it asks for something called automation. Automation runs from a one to a 10. We see here uh, in this red circle that it goes four, five, three, three, three. So that's just the level of automation for each different product. Um, an automation of a one means you're assembling everything by hand. You're doing stuff with your screwdriver. It's very, you know, manually labor intensive. Automation of a 10 means you have fully autonomous robots doing everything. It's a lot of money up front, but your employment cost going forward is super low because you have robots doing everything, so you don't need people. So your automation level and uh, one through 10 and everything in between, and you can go uh, increments of 0.1 and up. So we see automation starts out with traditional with 4.0. So we're going to type in 4.0. That's in the wrong cell. So 4.0. And we need to calculate the cost to double its capacity. Um, the reason why we're figuring out the cost, it's, it's going to automatically do it for you when we get into the actual simulation. But it's good to understand where that comes from because the most expensive things in CapSim are adding capacity and increasing automation. So when you get those red lines through all your stuff, that's most likely due to uh, automation and capacity. So the cost to double capacity, we see down here, it gives us a formula. So increasing capacity is $6 per unit with an adjustment for automation. So the formula is <clears throat> our first shift capacity, which we did right here is 1800. And then we do times, open parentheses, $6, $6 plus open parentheses, four times our current automation level. So we're gonna do four times current autom automation level of four, which gives us 39,600. And yeah, that's correct on the, um, what is this called? Uh, this is correct over here on our situation analysis page. So, and so we're at a four and it can go up to a 10. So we need to figure out what is our cost to raise automation to a 10. So <clears throat> we look at this formula over here. We go one over increasing automation is per unit of capacity. So we're going to do equals our first shift capacity of 1800 times open parentheses four times. That's a plus times open parentheses 10 times. I, OK, I can't speak. So we do, okay, I'm just gonna redo that, <laughs> that was bad. Okay, so equals, we do our first shift capacity of 1800 times open parentheses, four times open parentheses, 10 minus the current automation level, which gives us 43,200, which raises our automation all the way up to a 10. And if it's, um, if you've never used Excel or Google Sheets, I would highly, highly, highly suggest learning it even if it's just for this class and almost any job you're going to have, you're going to use Excel um, and it's super easy because I just put in all these numbers right here and I was easily able to do these more complex um, formulas. Super, super easy. Um, it's the world's most powerful calculator. <laughs> That's what a lot of people say. So we have this first line filled out. You're going to fill out the second line on your own for this first shift. Um, you need to look down here. It's 1400 and then for automation, you need to look down here and it is at a five. 
So we can go ahead and move on, but you're going to have to do the low end before it'll fill in everything. So let's go ahead and go to the margin analysis. This is the one that has the most, most math, um, but it's simple math. But there are just some things we have to uh, explain and get various pieces of data from. So for traditional, our ABLE product, we need to look at the price. So I took a screenshot of what's available on the situation analysis, and we see the price is $28. That is how much we're charging the customer for our product. Our material cost, we need to look at uh, in that red square again. We see it's $11.59. Let's go ahead and put it in. And our labor cost is $7.49. Material cost is how much it costs us to build it in the raw materials. And labor cost is how much it costs us to put it together. So we see that $11.59 and 749 don't add up to 28. Um, and so we actually are charging more than what it costs us to build it. We're trying to get a profit. We're trying to make sales like any good business. Um, so the difference between that is called your contribution margin. So your contribution margin, as we see in this formula down here, is your sales price of $28 minus what it costs you to build it. So your price minus your material cost plus your labor cost. And that's how much you have left over to pay your other bills and your other costs. And it asks us a question right here, second shift, yes or no? It's asking you, did you require second shift capacity to produce all your units? So you need to look down here, um, just one right, one column right in this red square, it says second shift in overtime. If it says 0% overtime, that means we didn't use any second shift. Uh, we see our low end uses 30% overtime, which means yes, they did use second shift. So you're going to put a Y or an N, uh, but I'm going to let you do the second line. So continuing on, our contribution margin, like I said, is going to be 28, our sales price minus our material cost plus our labor cost. And make sure you do an open parentheses because we want to do the 11.59 plus a 7.49 minus from that $28, which gives us. Our $28 minus $11.59 minus $7.49 gives us $8.92 in our uh, pocket that we can use to pay our other expenses. So for each item we sell, uh, we get to keep $8.92. That is our contribution margin, how much money we have left over after paying for the product itself. And we want to look at that as a percentage. So we need to do the contribution margin. So the amount left over divided by the sales price. So we do 892 divided by 28 gives us a 31.9% contribution margin. That is a pretty good margin. And for Capsim, the rule of the game is your overall contribution margin for your company, you wanna be over 30%. Over 30% lets you bring in a lot of cash um, and, a lot, and it lets you really expand your business. If you're below 30%, you're cutting things tight, you're cutting things close. I've seen people get, as high as 30, 40. If you do some crazy strategies, it can be 50 or 60. Um, but remember, to have contribution margin, you can do two things. Uh, you can either raise your price or you can decrease your costs. So the way you want to do it, you're going to do both. But it depends on certain customers because certain products are going to have really high contribution margins. Those are your cash cows or you're going to have super low contribution margins, um, but you can make up for it in sales. So um, you're going to do the second line. You're going to input all this information and you will then it'll auto populate. So again, we need to scroll down and there's actually a second part in here and is a margin potential. And we need to look at some things that are going to help us maximize this margin. So uh, let's scroll down. Let me move this up a little bit. <clears throat> so. Each year, it gives us a maximum price we can charge, and that's located in the Capstone Courier, but it has conveniently put everything um, up here for us, and I took a screenshot of what we need to do, but you can find it easily in your situation analysis. So for ABLE, <clears throat> the maximum price, like we see in the second to last column here, is $30. So we're going to put in $30. That is the maximum price people are willing to pay. Remember, uh, the different segments have different things that they care about. So if they don't care about price, um, you know, they're willing to pay whatever. They, you'll probably get people if everything else is correct. But if it's like a low end product where the number one thing they care about is price, you won't be able to charge the maximum. So this is a hypothetical in a perfect world. If you could have the minimum required costs and the maximum sales price, what you would get. 
So our maximum price is $30. That's the most we'll be able to sell it for. Uh, remember, each round, this is going to go down by 50 cents in the actual game. But for this first round, this is a hypothetical. So our minimum material cost, this is another formula we're going to have to do. Because remember, materials are based on your MTBF, which is your reliability, um, and the trailing edge position, which is their minimum required thing. So we do the reliability, our MTBF, which is essentially the quality of materials using, plus the trailing edge position, which is the minimum required um, <clears throat> uh, quality that they'll accept. So minimum material cost is equals. We need to do double open parentheses. So our lowest acceptab acceptable MTBF is 14,000 for our traditional product. So 14,000. Um, times 30%, and then we need to close parentheses, divide that by 1,000, and then we're going to close parentheses, and we need to add on our trailing edge position cost. So our trailing edge position cost for traditional is 380, and remember, for the second line, all your numbers are going to be different. So it gives us a minimum material cost of $8. And then we need to calculate our labor cost because to build something, you need to have the actual material and you need to pay people to put it together, even if your automation is up to a 10. So if your automation is low, you have to pay a lot of people money to put it together. But if your automation is high, you need to pay only a few people because robots are doing everything. And they're a trade off because people, um, robots are cheap, but if you don't have a lot of automation, you're going to have to pay a lot of employment. Um, so the minimum labor cost is. Uh, 1120, which is the hourly wage we're paying our employees. 1120 minus open parentheses 1.12 uh, times the automation rating. So the automation rating currently, just in this hypothetical situation for our traditional product, is eight. So you do that 1.12 times eight, eight double close parentheses plus 1.12, and. I typed in something wrong. Oh, there it is. Which gives us a minimum labor cost of 3.36. So we did $11.20 minus uh, 1.12 times 8, close parentheses, plus 1.12. Gives us a minimum labor cost of $3.36. So the minimum material cost is $8. Minimum labor cost is $3.36. So let's see how much money we have left over from that $30. So contribution margin, remember it's the maximum price minus our, our material cost plus our labor cost, which gives us 1864 contribution margin. That is awesome. So for each sale we make, we get to put 1864 in our pocket to pay expenses of, above and beyond the product itself. So contribution margin percentage. So we do 1864 divided by $30, which gives us a 62.13% contribution margin. That is amazing. That is awesome. You're not going to remember, this is a hypothetical situation. That means we're charging you the most and giving you the least. You get a 62.13% contribution margin. Remember, your goal is to have a contribution margin above 30%. That is easily, easily attainable if your prices are correct, if you move your product to the ideal spot, and if it's in the uh, correct MTBF slash reliability range. So you're going to go ahead and do this second line yourself. And once you do that, you can complete the situation analysis. Um, I lied. I lied. There's one more section, but it's not a form. It's not formula based. Um, it is essentially looking at the capstone courier and looking at all your information and filling in ABCD uh, ABC information. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up and I'll do the first one with you guys. Okay. Okay, here we go. It fills us in, but you can't see what I put up first, so that's good. So we it asks us to fill in the price and reliability, and it essentially gives us an A, B, or C grade. So what this really is doing is helping you look in the capstone courier and get familiar with all the information. So I'm just going to do the traditional product for you guys. So look at the traditional product, and we need to look at the price. Assume that you are in company ABLE right now. Um, 
So scroll down. So the top two buying criteria. Okay. So assume that you're able and look at your price. Your price is at $28. So $28 says it is a C. So we're going to go ahead and type in C. Then we look at the reliability for able and the MTBF is the 17,500. So 17,500 is actually an A. So put that in and it's going to auto populate and you're going to have to do that for each um, each of these different segments. So complete situation analysis. <clears throat> Let's go back to our dashboard. And the situation analysis is good because it shows you some of the nitty gritty rules behind Capson. Um, and it just helps you, you know, get your feet wet. So don't be afraid to reach out to me. Don't be afraid to um, ask me for help if you need it. I'm here for you guys. Tammy's here for you guys. Um, and Capstone is great. So go ahead and get started on those practice rounds. Email me. Check out the web website, uvucapstonhelp.wordpress.com. Um, don't be afraid to text me or email me. And good luck. Have a good day.